Hi, I'm Swizetz and this is my blog. Today I'm going to show you how we used Webpack to reduce our JavaScript footprint by 50%. Here's how the site works with our old setup. Refresh the page, wait a little bit, and down here you'll see, if I zoom in, you'll see that we do 30 JavaScript requests and download about 3.1 megabytes of JavaScript. This is minified, but not gzip. And yes, before you ask, the site does work as a single page application where everything is loaded in JavaScript, the HTML works in JavaScript, and once you're, bah, once you're navigating around the page, it's only doing API requests and no longer actually using the server for anything serious. If you look at our old Webpack file, you'll see that we already do code splitting and all those other smart things like, where is it? Anyway, we are doing code splitting and we have a commons chunk plugin that sort of is supposed to make a vendors file and a manifest file and all those cool things that the Webpack documentation says that you should do. So we're doing all the cool stuff that we're supposed to following best practices. But the problem that we have is here, this part. It's how we're handling external libraries, jQuery, Lodash, Backbone, things like that. We're using all of them as externals and loading them from a public CDN, which is what creates like almost half of the requests you see down here. The best practices used to be that you should load as many libraries as possible from a public CDN so that users who might already have them from similar websites already have them cached and don't have to download them again. This is okay in theory, but the problem is that it creates a lot of requests and you're probably not actually using most of the libraries. Like we're using AWS SDK, which is something like 500 kilobytes of JavaScript when it's minified and gzipped, and we only use one function. But since Webpack 2 came out, what you can do is you can bundle your own libraries and tree shake them and then you're only downloading the stuff that you actually use. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. Now just to prove that I'm not making this shit up, here's the same page but with the updated configuration. Reload. And if you look down here, you'll see that it does 19 requests and only gets 2.2 megabytes. So Size-wise, it's not quite 50% improvement because it's a bigger improvement when it actually compresses everything. Because locally, I'm not doing gzip, but 19 requests is a lot better than 30 requests, especially when you're on a shitty 4G network or something like that. The way we achieve this is by dynamically generating the commons chunk plugin configuration. At the very top, we list all of our apps, which is very similar to the entry configuration you would normally see in Webpack anyway. And then we have global modules, which get, which get generated into Webpack provide plugin configurations. What that means is it replaces everything that's like dollar or jQuery or window jQuery with required jQuery. So that makes all of our code that was used to having a global value still work without having to rewrite any of it. With those two things configured, we can go all the way down here to the plugins configuration, which is right here. And it used to be just no emit errors, no emit errors plugin and extract text plugin. Now we're adding the global modules, which is a list of provide plugin configurations. And then we concatenate another array, which is, which goes through the apps and load creates a new commons chunk plugin called a, an app vendor for each individual app. We create a new vendor file. And in the end, we generate a big manifest file for all of the, for all of our JavaScript together. Now this is again to prevent churn in caching and things like that. It's an idea I picked up from the Webpack documentation. That's basically it. 50% improvement in JavaScript footprint without changing any of the code. There's a bit more detail in the article downstairs.